there, it's Miriam with Engadget, and I'm here with Evan Upton, the executive director of Raspberry Pi. Hey, hi, how's it going? Yeah, it's pretty good. Kind of getting a little bit tired now towards the end of the yeah, first day. Yeah, it's a uh, long day at Maker Faire, isn't it? Is. It is. It's a long, hot day at Maker Faire. So tell me a little bit. Uh, you have the module in your hand, right there. there one of them. It's yeah, here. One of them. It's real. Um, they so exist. It's not. It's not an elaborate Photoshop hoax. Lots of people have them, uh, but lots of people are still waiting. Right. Yeah. So tell me a little bit. What? First of all, let's let's start at the beginning. What is Raspberry Pi, and where? How did it come to be? So Raspberry Pi is a, it, Raspberry Pi is a twenty-five or thirty-five, depending on the version, dollar uh, Linux box. So right. So it's, it's an ARM Linux box, and, and it's really important for us to, to emphasize how very standard this thing is. You know, you, when you boot this thing up, you get a Linux machine. You know, it's got an ARM instead of an x86 processor in it. It's a very recognizable environment. Um, we use uh, either an old style analog television or a, uh, a digital, an, an HDMI digital television as a display output. Right, I USB. saw you have a com compo composite output. We do have composite output. Unfortunately, we don't have component output. It would have been nice to have component, but the chip we're using doesn't support that. Right. Um, we have uh, uh, use USB for mouse and keyboard. Uh, and we use a, an SD card for storage and a um, uh, mobile phone charger as a password. And so the $35 model adds another USB port and an Ethernet jack, right? Yeah, that's correct. So, so the, the difference is, I mean, the $25 one, you know, our strap line on our website is still uh, an ARM Linux box for $25. Uh, for $25. Um, and the $25 one is the one we intended to build. Uh, but what a, the first thing a lot of people told us they would do is to take this thing, plug it into a hub and plug it into an Ethernet adapter. So we saw that we, and that was going to cost people uh, maybe another $20. Right. So we, we saw a way to add another $10 to the device um, and, um, and be, able to support, be able to support that on the board. So this is where we've got the kind of Model A, Model B distinction. Right on. So I saw you on the panel earlier with Ben Peck, oh, yeah. and uh, you guys were talking well, you specifically were talking about how you got there, and you mentioned the BBC Micro, mm -hmm. which as a Europe person that grew up in Europe in the 80s, as a teenager in the 80s, I can totally relate to. Obviously, I didn't have one. I had a, a ZX Spectrum oh. myself. Oh. Look, look, look. Get, get, all, get out behind me. We're all friends. Ultimately, yeah. though, you yeah. you are you got a computer that was built by the team who invented ARM. Yeah. So that's a big deal. There's a connection there. It's an there. enormous deal for us. And in fact, we went to the uh, went and did a uh, did a talk at the uh, 30th anniversary of the uh, of the BBC Microcomputer uh, at ARM back in March. And uh, I got to meet all of the team. I got to meet Steve Ferber and Sophie Wilson. Sophie actually works with me at Broadcom uh, in, in a different group of Broadcom. Um, and um, uh, Chris Curry, uh, Herman Hauser. So I got to meet a lot of those guys who were kind of my heroes as a, as a child. And I was kind of thrilled. I bet. Yeah. I'd be thrilled too. Yeah. So, Raspberry Pi, you decide to do this. Basically, you're looking at the success of the uh, all the Arduino boards out there in a way, right? But yeah. you wanted to give us something a little more powerful and needy, right? Linux. Yeah. 32-bit. You know, yeah. You know, 32-bit protected mode operating system. You know, this is a real... Uh, this is a real desktop computer. You know, if you look at it, its level of performance, you, you'd be very recognizable to somebody from maybe the early part of the last decade. You know, from, in terms of general purpose performance, in terms of multimedia performance, so the big, we've got this fantastic bonus. This is basically a multimedia chip. You know, the, right. and so we've got kind of between a PlayStation 2 and a PlayStation 3 level of graphics performance for uh, 35 or 25. Yeah, absolutely, it's just incredible. I mean, it's a yeah. You can do yeah. You know, Moore's law is an amazing thing. You can do two things. Moore's law. You can pick a price and every year you can fill up to that price you can put more and more and more into that price or you can pick a feature set and you can ride Moore's law down. Now typically people haven't done that and so we're kind of uh, we're, we're using Moore's law the other way. You know, we're right. using it to take a, a level of features that people really were very comfortable with and loved until very recently and then drive that price down to a point where it's accessible to everyone. So how did it come to be? Like you were just sitting around and one day you're like we need to make this. Yeah we were in the pub you know and uh, uh, you know, we need something to talk about. Um, so yeah, we this was a bunch of us at the university in Cambridge. We uh, we were interviewing school kids to come to come to Cambridge, and every year we had a smaller number of people. Every 
idea, the things they knew how to do. One of my one of my friends um, who introduced me to my wife, in fact, was um, a guy called Alex Evans when I was an undergraduate, uh, who went on to found a company called Media Molecule and make a game called Little Big Planet, uh, which is you know pretty much not almost not quite but almost straight out of university. So that was a level in the 1990s. You know, I was a thick kid, you know, when I was there. Um, you know, uh, that was the sort of thing you could rely on. Uh, and by the time I was interviewing people in 2005, 2006. That had, that had evaporated. You know, you had uh, half the number of applicants, and maybe they'd done a little bit of web programming. And there's nothing wrong with that. It's the bright kids. But it means you have to spend a lot of time in the first year uh, bringing them up to a standard you used to be able to rely on. And so, to some extent, Raspberry Pi is, a, is an attempt to give people those missing computers. Right. The uh, simple so that, computers. Yeah, that, that we had as children. The ZX, the B, the B, TRS-80, Commodore 64. These machines, you turn them on, they go beep, and you go start programming. Yeah. Um, so we're just trying to kind of provide that to people. Originally, with a view to solving this tiny little problem, this, this really parochial little uh, little problem. Uh, and then, as time has gone on, interest has grown, and uh, and here you are now. And here I am now in sunny, uh, sunny, sun, sunny middle California. Middle California. So obviously, very, very popular product because of the price point and what it can do. Yeah. So I know it's been a challenge for you guys to ramp up production. Uh, what can you tell our readers about? The, the, especially those who've ordered, like how, how are things looking right now? Okay, so we believe there will be approximately 200,000 units in the field by the end of June. That's our, uh, that doesn't go anywhere near filling the filling the hole, but you know, it's 200,000 units. Right. In, in fact, if you go and look on eBay now, we, there are now enough in the wild that if you really need a Raspberry Pi today, you can pick one up on eBay for not all that much money. So, or you can borrow yours. Or you can or borrow bands. this one here. Right. If you can get here in the next five minutes, you can, you can have this one on. Right on. Um, so, um, so uh, you know, it's going to take a little while before um, anyone can buy them, uh, before anyone can buy one immediately with no lead time, uh, straight from distribution, but we will get there. Um, both of our distribution partners, so RS Components and Premier Funnel, both working incredibly hard to, to ramp. It's just hard to ramp. You no, know, it's this hard. Is like, you know, you're talking, you, you know, you want to do a few hundred thousand units of quarter. This is a serious piece of uh, serious piece of work. For sure. So where do you see Raspberry Pi heading uh, later this year, or next year, in the future? I guess, I guess for us, for the foundation, a uh, renewed focus on the educational mission. We've been very focused on the operational issues involved in getting the board out in this kind of volume. So we want to go back and start looking at our original aim, which is education. We want to see some add-on boards. We want to see community add-on boards. I was going to ask you about that. I mean, yeah. uh, you know, Adafruit's talk about plates uh, as opposed yeah. to shields yeah. for Arduino. So yeah. what, what do you, would you like to see? If, if you obviously don't want to get into maybe the plates because it's yeah. a lot more manufacturing yeah. and cost and complexity, yeah. but if you, as the creator of Raspberry Pi, were to pick your first plate, what would it be? <laughs> Camera board. That but camera we're doing board? it ourselves. Yeah, you are, are doing, doing it. Ourselves. So uh, if you look at the board, uh, this fella here, it's a camera connector, a flat panel, a, a, a flat uh, ribbon connector right. for a CSI camera. Uh, as of yesterday on our blog, and I think on Engadget as well, there have been some um, uh, some pictures, yep. first proof of life pictures out of the camera board, 14 megapixel camera board for this. For this. So that would be my first thing. Uh, I want it so much, we're doing it ourselves. I figured that's what you were going to say. Yeah, you know, <laughs> and then flat, flat panel display, you know. Um, LDVS you know, of some yeah, kind. Yeah, LDVS, you know, we have a, the other, the other similar connector here. This is a DSi, a MIPI DSi connector. Um, we'd love to do a board that has a DSi to LVDF bridge, give people an opportunity to support very large panels on here. Yeah. You could do it using the HDMI, but it's kind of hacky, right? So, yeah, we really want to do that using the, uh, the MIPI DSi. Cool, awesome. Well, thanks for your time. It's really nice to meet you here and uh, get a chance to get a feel for what's going on. Uh, all the luck, all, best of luck with uh, ramping up and, and delivering your product. And I think uh, everybody's very excited, so we're all rooting for you. Awesome, thanks very much. Cheers. Cheers.